Yeah, Laura Oxier has been brought on to uh, increase our communications at MCBC, give us uh, possibilities of doing more uh, creative, colorful brochures and materials for uh, getting the word out to our people as to what uh, what we're doing and what our priorities are and helping us to, uh, to be able to um, move into yeah, better communication. Well, the uh, sense that we have from our people is that uh, a lot of people like to give to projects. Uh, you know, giving to the budget is great and a lot of people love doing that, but giving to projects is more meaningful. And so we put, we put together a giving brochure uh, that highlights 10 different projects that people can give directly to and be able to uh, really experience more closely where their dollars are going when they give to the work of Mennonite Church BC. Steve Heinrichs, who was a pastor up at uh, Church of the Way in Grand Isle, uh, came uh, to the Lower Mainland to uh, do some explorations as to what kind of First Nations ministry could be taking place in the Lower Mainland. And it was in a partnership with Mennonite Church Canada in their interests also in seeing what the needs might be in being able to do work differently maybe than the church has tried over the last number of, of even centuries to, to work with First Nations people. and. Uh, so we did a research project and Steve was the one who gave leadership to that and out of that uh, Steve was called to uh, serve with Mennonite Church Canada, moved off to Winnipeg and uh, by his recommendation we've brought on uh, Brandon McDonald. As, he's a First Nations person who's uh, very familiar with Mennonite Church and Evangelical Churches uh, and is very excited about bridging the difference between the two sides of the water where the uh, First Nations people are on the one side and, and the evangelical church is on the other side and uh, he's looking forward to helping us to be able to bridge that and become friends in new ways with the First Nations people in our neighborhood. Yeah, 2012 is the year we're going to celebrate our 75th anniversary as Mennonite Church BC and uh, we're going to be putting together a website which is uh, really exciting. There's going to be video interviews on the website, uh, there's going to be stories of uh, important people, people who made a difference and are continuing to make a difference and especially in the last 20 years of, of uh, our conference and uh, we're also going to be putting together uh, an update on the history book, just uh, updating the stories of each congregation uh, as to the differences that they have been making in their neighborhoods and who they've become in the last 20 years. Stuart Murray, as some of you may know, has written the book The Naked Anabaptist and we're encouraging all of you to read that uh, book in preparation for our lead conference which will be on March the 2nd where Stuart Murray will be our keynote speaker uh, talking about what it means to be an Anabaptist, him coming as someone who isn't particularly Mennonite but is an Anabaptist at heart and uh, he's coming to uh, help us understand how we as Mennonites have sometimes come up short on really being the Anabaptists that we always have intended to be but also to help celebrate with us the good things that we have done in, in our uh, uh, in our world, in our place, as we've been Mennonites here in BC. Uh, he'll be our speaker at the LEAD conference. He'll also be our speaker at a banquet uh, that we'll be having uh, at the end of our annual meeting on Saturday, March the 3rd. Uh, and we'll talk, be talking to us about what the future might look like for uh, an Anabaptist, Anabaptist people right here in BC. Yeah, MCBC uh, has taken on a priority of churches planting churches. I know we went through a series, a season in these last 20 years of, of doing some what we call cold church plants, new church plants, and, and they're good and many of them have stood the test of time, but we also see that our congregations have the wherewithal within them to be able to uh, catch the vision for their communities and reach out into their communities and develop the potential of actually planting churches in their communities and uh, we seek to come alongside of all the congregations in uh, our conference to uh, help them to imagine planting a church in their community and uh, so we call it churches planting churches. Amen. 
Yeah, for resourcing pastors, we have a couple of things going on. Uh, we have some training courses that we do, helping them to uh, be the best that they can be. Our lead conference, which happens every year, the day before annual meeting, is a time where we pursue different topics regarding the uh, uh, healthy pastors or helping pa pastors to be healthy. Uh, we have our annual pastor spouse retreat where we get try to get all of our pastors and their spouses to come together uh, just to uh, be together, to relax and enjoy each other's company, but also to receive some input uh, in their own growth as, as, as pastors and also to, uh, to recognize that they have each other and they can lean on each other. Um, thirdly, we have also the uh, pastors' gatherings. We have three pastors' gatherings, one in Vancouver, one in the Fraser Valley, and then one for our youth pastors. Uh, they get together every month probably nine months out of, the, out of the year and it's just a time also for them to encourage each other and to talk about things that are important specific topics that help them to understand how they can best minister in their churches my uh, choice to drink a chai latte today has to do with uh, the spice of life Actually, no, it has to be really about, about uh, choices and uh, changes and being different and to know that I haven't always had chai latte. It has not always been my first, uh, my first priority. What is your drink of choice? My drink of choice is mate. Mate is a drink that is healthy and ha uh, makes a person strong and, 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 and also gives you a bit of a buzz. <laughs> a good cup of strong coffee is also really good. Uh, but it's got to be gourmet, good, strong, gourmet coffee. Gives you the energy to get out and ride. Ever since I started with Mennonite Church BC in this position, uh, we've done an annual motorcycle ride. So this was our fourth annual Mennonite Church BC motorcycle ride. This year we went south of the border to the uh, north part of Washington State and, and we're riding through the mountains. Uh, we were actually this year, more than any other year, had more spouses along. So we had 12 motorcycles and 18 riders, which is six. Uh, we're riding double with a spouse on the back and uh, it was a great time of, of just uh, riding together but stopping, enjoying the views. Uh, you know, we don't just go all out. We like to stop about every hour and take in the beauty that's around us and talk, have a good time together, eat food together and uh, just had a, had a two day ride, went down south to across uh, the border and across the northern part of Washington state, came out at Orville, Washington, and uh, came back through Canada again. So, good bunch of good bunch of folks getting to know each other. Uh, the neat thing about the motorcycle ride is that we have uh, people from all uh, all number of different churches in Mennonite Church, BC, that uh, have no other reason to know each other other than that they've uh, uh, gone riding motorcycle together and we've bridged bridged uh, people from a whole variety of churches within our conference in just because of the ride. I am. I am playing hockey. And you need to know the name of our team, of course, which is called Men on Ice. And if you say that really fast, it's Mennonites. Uh, anyways, it takes a youth pastor to come up with a name like that, which it was. Uh, so we're getting going once again as the Men on Ice in another season of uh, playing uh, in the Coast Hockey League in Richmond. <laughs> <laughs>